Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you to this Lenten Reflection for the third Sunday of Lent within this period of penitential preparation before Easter. Our first reading from today from the book of Exodus chapter 17 from verse 3 to 7 describes God's provision of water from the rock to the people of Israel. Before this time, this call of Moses in Exodus chapter 3 was a declaration of God's love to the people of Israel, leading to their deliverance. This deliverance, we all know, came to reality, not counting on the strength of the people of Israel, but then on God's power, His almighty power. Lo and behold, today the people of Israel complained their lack of water, different from the undrinkable water of Mara. One may question, do the people of Israel really have the right to complain? Yes, they do. But then their complaint was an expression of their faithlessness to God. They tested God, Massa, and argued with Moses, Meribah. Today also they spoke in silly ways you know, to God and to Moses. They accused God and Moses of a possible genocide. In turn, they wanted to kill Moses and, if possible, God. They were enraged, they were impatient, they were confrontational. They questioned the reason behind their deliverance and, above all, the sufficiency of God's grace. We must learn from this passage to put our trust in God at all times, especially at difficult moments, even when our journey of life seems to be incomprehensible. Let us remember that we must not forget the miracle of yesterday because of the difficulty of today. We must also learn from Moses the way Moses also handled the situation. Moses didn't respond to the people of Israel with unguarded words, but because two wrongs cannot make a right. And that is also one of the lessons we must learn today in our conflict resolution with our brothers and sisters. Today, Moses turned to God. He believed in God's power. He believed in His providence. Moses believed in God's faithfulness and goodness. And behold, after taking instruction from the Lord, water came forth from the rock. Jesus is a symbol of this water. He's a prototype of this water because He is the living spring. He is the rock of ages. In the Gospel reading of today from Luke chapter 4, from verse 5 to 42, we see some similarities also with the first reading today. We are told that Jesus encountered, you know, the Samaritan woman. Jesus broke many major principles and protocols during this encounter. First and foremost, the woman was a Samaritan woman and was a subject of sectarian hatred. Jews and Samaritans do not have ties together. Jesus broke, you know, this protocol. Secondly, agenda forbade Jesus from familiarizing with her, according to rabbinic law. Little wonder the disciples were astonished when they returned to see Jesus, you know, talking to this woman, not just to a woman, but a Samaritan woman. Also, a loose life, a loose living, a sinful nature should have prompted Jesus withdraw her from her. But indeed, Jesus broke these protocols because the conversion of soul, the salvation of every human person, is the priority of Jesus. And so this impediment did not you know, count on God's love for her. Therefore, Jesus established this conversation. At this point, remember the mission statement of Jesus in Luke chapter 5 from verse 32. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Furthermore, we must not lose sight of the process of self-discovery with regard to this woman, this Samaritan woman. Jesus helped this woman to rediscover a disgusting yet redeemable nature. Therefore, can we also today rediscover our way to the Lord? Our rediscovery is only possible in the presence of God. Like this Samaritan woman, we rediscover ourselves in God's presence brothers and sisters. 
The Holy Spirit is this living water that quenches our taste. It refreshes us. It invigorates our body. It purifies us. It makes us fruitful and above all, make us one with God. The water of Christ is free and inexhaustible. In the prophecy of Isaiah tells us in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1, he says, Let him who is thirsty come. And Revelation chapter 21 verse 6 also tells us that, To the thirsty I will give water without price from the fountain of water of life. Therefore I ask you today, are you thirsty? Indeed we are thirsty as an individual and as a church. Therefore let us come to this living spring. Let us come to this fountain of life. The Samaritan woman was convinced of a new found fountain of life. She left a water pot even at the well with Jesus to proclaim to the nations a source of life, a new source of life. We are the new evangelizers of Christ. Like the Samaritan woman, an evangelizer must first be evangelized. Our desire for God must be our utmost priority. We must turn everward at all times to do the will of the Father that must be our meal. Christians, today I ask you, what are you waiting for? There is great need for zeal and earnestness. Why the procrastination? Let the salvation of your soul and the soul of others be your greatest priority while on this earthly pilgrimage. Therefore, let us heed to the call of the psalmist in Psalm 95 verse 7, O oh, that today you will listen to his voice, add not your heart. May the Lord bless his word in our heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.